Prophet Ronald Dwayne Whitfield recording on July 25th of 2018, Wednesday. As you see, here is in the Supreme Court of Texas, miscellaneous docket number 10-9190, approval of referendum on proposed amendments to the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct. These rules require that attorneys Valerie, Brock, Donald, Crane, and Julia Crow withdraw. Withdraw. I will pause this video and my wife and I will explain what is going on and why we are making this video. No, recording. Alright, Brandy, you have two attorneys. Can you state their names? Donald Crane and Julie Crow. Julia or uh, Julie. Julie Crow. Okay, the attorney that has been appointed to represent me, name is Valerie Brock. Each attorney has been told, your, you have two attorneys, and you have instructed your attorneys to do what? Um, I've instructed them to withdraw. I call them. I've sent them emails, actually. Donald Crane told me to email them, and I've done that. I haven't heard back from them, um, and they're they're like prolonging this situation. Okay, and you specifically told each attorney, each. name them. I told Donald Crane. He's one of my attorneys, and I told Julie Julia Crow. And how did you communicate them to withdraw? I sent them emails, and I love voicemails, and I'm calling, and I verbally told. Donald Crane. Okay, also, you have uh, in your Gmail account, I have in my Gmail account, and we also have, uh, well, in our accounts, in Google account as well, uh, Google Drive, uh, emails to, from, uh, which are recordings from a call app to your former attorney, Bonnie Fitch, way last year before Judge Phillips sat in a case mm -hmm. as a jury. He sat as a jury sits, and you told her to withdraw, and she did not withdraw, did she? Right. Instead, she stayed on the case, and she never communicated to the judge and or did what she needed to do, which was file for jury demand. You wanted jury demand, and I wanted jury demand, mm -hmm. and you didn't get that. No. Okay, now the rocket in the first court of appeals in two appeal appellate cases, 01-18-00311CV and 01-18-00485 or 45-CV clearly shows us in trial telling Judge Phillips that we want trial by jury and the reason why uh, we couldn't get this to his attention because of what? Bonnie Fitch. Bonnie Fitch. She never returns your phone calls. And we have proved not that the, the, the system, the internet is going to show that the recordings were sent to her way last year. So you have to put a court or trial judge on notice at least 30 days in advance of your demand for jury. And you tried to do this by, you know, we called Bonnie and she just wouldn't do it. So that would tell us that they didn't want you to have a trial by jury. Right. Okay, so have we covered everything? So I've uh, called, I've called the State Bar of Texas. The State Bar was uh, taken aback that I'm having this issue. So the State Bar of Texas stated they were sending me the grievance form. And I recorded the conversation. If I understood them correctly, they have... Uh, uh, department or uh, whatever I was explaining, I didn't quite fully understand it, where they will assist me bring a, a good or correct or proper complaint against uh, Valerie Brock. And they, they also, I'm waiting for that to come in the mail. I've asked this attorney, before she even uh, filed a motion for new trial, I told her she was appointed by Judge John Phillips of the 314 Judicial District Court 
Paris County, Texas, on July 10, 2018, to represent me. That night, she's filing what the Supreme Court of Texas refers to as a pro forma uh, motion for new trial. Well, first of all, I already have a motion for new trial and an amended motion for new trial. All I need is what the state bar rules describes as an advocate to assist me prosecute it in an evidentiary hearing. Instead of presenting my cognizable issues, she filed some trash saying that the evidence was factually and legally insufficient to support the judgment. But she she has no proof to back up her claim. Quote, to be convincing when you write and when you speak, you need to back up your opinion with reasons and evidence. Nobody's going to believe that what you say is true, Miss. Julie or rather Valerie Brock just because you say it you need to build a sound logical argument consisting of your opinion reasons and evidence by definition evidence is any kind of specific information that you can use to back up your motion for new trial evidence may consist of facts statistics examples quotations from experts and incident I memorized all this in prison baby, because I knew someday I might need this knowledge now, over my objection and over my protest, and without even telling me that last night I filed, last night electronically, he, he filed a motion for new trial. I'm not going to go in there. I'm going to do it. I'm going to violate the ethical rules and the professional rules on attorney uh, conduct. Uh, published by the state bar, and I'm finna go in here and file and argue some trash. You're not finna get an evidentiary hearing. I'm not finna move for a continuance. I'm finna lie to you. I'm finna mislead you because I'm I'm assuming you don't know. You don't know the law like I do. I don't think you might know how when you see a stop sign, stop, a red light, stop. But you don't know the law like I do. I've been to school. You ain't been to school, so you don't know the law. That means so I, I don't. Ha- I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna deceive you. I'm gonna. No, you're not gonna deceive me because I studied law probably for you. Before you even thought about becoming a lawyer. I've been studying law ever since 1993. I just don't have a license. And as far as uh, typing, like lawyers, or even lawyers probably don't type. They have paralegals to do all that. So in court, you don't hear. You see a different game in court. You On, on paper, you think that's a lawyer. No, that's a paralegal typed that up. And he just signed it. If he or she even done that. So what I'm getting at, this attorney had... Over my objection, she represented a conflict of interest. My wife and I get to go in our motion for new trial. That cannot be taken away from us. Judge Phillips cannot uh, appoint what is called sham attorneys. Google that, please. Sham lawyers who are ignoring. These lawyers have no knowledge, no personal knowledge. Whenever there is a motion for new trial and the record does not disclose the facts or it cannot be determined from the record, then if the grounds that you allege are what we call cognizable, a motion for new a motion for evidentiary hearing is mandatory. It's mandatory. You can't take that from us. For example, uh, we don't want a, no piecemeal litigation. We want to present all our issues at one time, in a motion for a new trial. But before a court can rule upon them, we also know that you have to support your claims with proof. You cannot say, for example, that as I used to try to explain to prison nurse, that you say the warden has a big, you know what, a vagina because I know a warden. You can't use another example. Okay, well, I like to use examples that people can mostly, I'm sorry, but I like, you know, con- well, okay. I would explain. Well, I, I would explain to prisoners that you have to back up what you say. You just cannot just say uh, that Bonnie Fitch violated the law, or the trial judge violated the law, or anybody by CPS violated committed crimes without proof. Without proof. You you can you will not get you are not entitled to relief. You have to support your allegations or your grounds with evidence because Judge Phillips and CPS prevented us from doing that. That's why we need the evidentiary hearing. For example, Paul Gonzalez, come on, you see this camera right here? This has an audio in it. 
It's a camera right here. It's eye catches from left to right. CPS was out here for five hours. I, Myron Evans, the video going to show not Myron Evans coming in this house and the police taking my child, but Paul Gonzalez. Yeah, Myron Evans going to come to court and commit perjury to say that he took my child and that he filed his lawsuit and he knows has all his personal and I got proof to show he is lying. Without Myron Evans, they could not take Caden. They could not keep Caden. They could not do nothing. The man who took our child was a Hispanic. His name was Paul Gonzalez. When the judge Phillips held no evidence, no initial hearing, he got upset. He quit. My mother, my mother was in court. And I got all these grounds where I automatically expose what CPS has done. I get to expose the hospital. I get to expose Judge Phillips, his crimes, Rachel Johnson, the Harris County attorney. I get to expose them all. I got the proof. And yet Judge Phillips is going to put these attorneys to you and to me to block these issues, these grounds. No, you cannot do that. That's why we're going over to the Office of Inspector General of the United States Attorney of the United States Department of Justice. If the FBI, we're going to see why the FBI is standing down. That's a legal term, Brandon, standing down. We want, we want to know why the United States Attorney is standing down when there's health care fraud. We are victims of health care fraud, and they turn the tables on us by alleging child abuse. You are supposed to have been given a drug test to show that CPS has lied on you and this drug alcohol place has conspired with uh, the CPS people by saying you are testing positive for drugs. My wife does not use drugs. But we have no attorney, nobody allowing us, hey, we can't dispute it, bring the takeover. Why, we can't, why is it that we can't be heard? Why we can't tell why can't we? We're going to leave. And let me, uh, Angela suggested that we keep our videos at 20 minutes, no longer. So we got 12 minutes going here. Why is it that you cannot show that CPS, Savannah Johnson, and all of them are lying, Tommy, you testing positive for. Brandon, do you know what cocaine looks like? Do you Have you ever seen some crap no. in your life? No. You don't have no idea what, do you, what, you don't know what cocaine looks like, no. do you? No. Your mother didn't raise y'all to do no, around no shit like that? No. You never smoked cigarettes in your life until you were how old? 20, 20-something. 22, 23. You're 24 now. And why is it your, why, you, 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 why does Bonnie just, why did Bonnie just stand there and not help you dispute and challenge and show that they lying? Why does she not do that if she was your attorney? Know why they are not okay? CPS has said CPS has said that Aunt Brenda lives across the street. My and uh, she lives close. Yes. But let me tell the world this right quick, and we'll get ready. You know, move on to the next thing. Just Philip is gonna be hurtful when he also learns that he did not what they call render judgment on April 12 of this year. His pronouncement from the bench that I'll grant your request is not a rendition of judgment. A judge must state, as the Supreme Court has repeatedly told judges from the beginning, you must pronounce judgment in the present tense. Not I'll grant your motion or I'll grant your divorce or I'll grant your request because that is an act in the future. Just yesterday, Brandon and I, we were at the courthouse, first court appeals, and we were looking at the rocket. And when I saw that, I'm like, wow, he's going to really be sick. But uh, uh, we don't want the court of appeals to, okay, here's the ground. We can reverse, get y'all back, y'all baby, without implementing the state of Texas because all the crimes y'all talking about is going to get this judge in federal penitentiary. He can't even get probation. He can't even get the, 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 the magnitude of his crime. He's a, he's a threat to our national security. So President Trump would never appoint him to any federal level. This judge is a, a, a clear threat. And when we didn't told her to counter Trump, but let me keep it clear, 14 minutes, six minutes to go. I'm making clear that I've submitted to uh, the first court of appeals to these attorneys, just throwing it out at them if they probably don't have no, uh, what's, what's the term uh, I want you to use? I can't, it's not coming to mind, but they, they want, they want, 
Jesus will probably refer to it as a parable, but they're not going to even really recognize or understand why I just threw it out there to them without the judge stating that. See, in other words, when you run the judgment, Judge Phillips would have said, your request that I allege, that I, I adjudicate Ronald Dwayne Whitfield as the alleged father is granted right now. You don't have to use those particular words, but you have. He has to render judgment now, not in the future. And what in the written instrument that that's what we come. Like, yes, that's the way it recognizes. Like the United States uh, will will withdraw its signature. Uh, uh, but I don't want to go into that because I remember reading. So I'm, I'm, I might jump somewhere else after what I read about us pulling out of the treaty. Uh, President, former President Bush pulled out of a treaty where we were in, you know. But uh, so Judge Phillips had to state that. But see, then he, he Judge Phillips had also, he's going to not understand that he got upset with Rachel Johnson because she finally, I don't know for what reason, she finally tried to tell a judge to adjudicate me as the presumed father. She got to telling him that he does not need to register his name. He's their married. So judge, uh, and he, he must not understand what she was trying to tell him. We need to adjudicate him as uh, uh, to terminate his rights as the no, presumed father and not the lead father. So now I'm finna go to the court. Give me my motherfucking, give me my baby because you didn't adjudicate a rule that the presumed father's rights were terminated. You terminated some alleged father, my child's birth certificate, and then they see she was trying to tell him, but he kind of got upset with her. Like, bitch, why are you what, what, why are you flipping out on me right now? What the hell is you talking about? Yeah. I mean, baby, I was reading it while you were just sitting there not distracting me. And he was kind of like, well, goddamn, what's wrong with you? But she was like, judge, maybe we should have talked about this before we come up in here. But, yeah, you, he, he, I got his birth. I offered his marriage, their marriage license to evidence. He been telling us from day one that he's not an alleged father. He is Caden's biological father. He is the presumed father. If you adjudicate him his rights as an alleged father, that judgment is void. He's all he's got his nigga's gonna show us. He's gonna he, we he, look judge, but he, he didn't get it. He didn't get it. I was see I wasn't there. He kicked me out the courtroom yet again for finna ask him. I said, excuse me, Yana. He kicked me out the courtroom for saying, excuse me, Your Honor. I had told who asked the witness a specific question. And just like in my criminal trial, when the witness do not answer, some questions call for yes or no. You may not. What you need to do is, you know, I know how to find a way. I know how to respond by not giving a yes or no answer. But I had a right, and every attorney has a right. I'm not an attorney, but as an advocate and what we call pro pre or persona, I had a right to... Yana, I'm not interrupting her. I'm, I'm telling him because I don't want what she's saying into the record. So I'm supposed to cut her off. That's what you. That's why you object. Objection, Yana. You cut off the testimony so the, so the jury won't hear it. You don't want to hear it. The jury didn't even hear it. So you object, Yana. And then you start stating your basis. He, uh, this judge is so either he's incompetent. Because he he overrules on an object for he without even hearing the basis for it, so they they would have to overrule him on on those issues alone. Judge, you cannot overrule an objection without even knowing why. You have to be guided by principles. One minute left. So uh, in this case, uh, he overruled. So I said, "Excuse me, Yana," and he ordered me out, kicked out the courtroom for saying, "Excuse me, Yana." What I was going to do, Yana, would you instruct this witness to answer? The question that I asked, I don't want to hear nothing about her opinion. I just want to know yes or no. Did I not or did you not tell me at the hospital, at the jail, when you came to visit me, that you saw these videos or whatever the question I was, yes or no? Because when you get, see, just like the prosecutor, when uh, Rachel Johnson, she's asking a leading question. All she need to sustain a judgment on appeal for clear and convincing evidence or whatever is the elements, the components. It, so, uh, for example, she might say, and so you're saying that if Caden was returned to his parents, he would be in a continuing danger with them. Yes. 
Dad is an element. Dad is in the rocket. So she's she's she knows what she needs to do to keep her judgments from their com- uh, from being over reversed. So she's she wants to get this but these specific issues clearly and convincingly in the rocket. So here I want to get in the rocket clearly and convincingly. Like you hear me asking you, Brandy, at any time did you swing or sling your child from side to side? And what did you say? At any time did you neglect your child? At any time did you mentally abuse your child? You know why? Can you have an idea why I'm asking you these questions? I have like a, maybe you want me to say that I did something bad or you you feel like you know the answers to these questions already or I do God knows the answer I'm not God God asks questions that he already knows the answer to know so you ask them to me hoping that I will no, no, why would I do that? No, the prosecutor. No, no, here's the question again. Brandon, when I'm asking you, see, they are already putting in on the record what they need to to sustain the judgment. I need to put in the record that there's a conflict right. and that the evidence is not clear and convincingly and convincing because you are a witness. CPS is not a witness. I'm no, no, Brandon. The judge did not witness. Did the judge? Did judge? No. Okay. Did Rachel Johnson witness you anything? No. Did Savannah? No. The, the CPS witness. So you were a witness, right? right. I was a witness, right? right? And whoever made these false allegations were a witness. So if if whoever made so damn what I damn all that. This is how this game worked. They allege allegations against you. This witness, there's no witness that came to court on April 12 and stated that you done anything. So I already know. See, the, the judge Philip already can't sit in, in the trial anyway. He's he can't do it because I already know what, what he. I already know. See, Brent, I'm a well ahead head of him in the game. Let me let me let me let me finish this here. Then we'll end this video. Brent, what I was doing is I after I saw that they didn't bring in a witness. Whatever happened at an adversary or adversary hearing. Uh, show cause hearing that has nothing to do with the trial now on the merits. Uh, Judge Phillips never, uh, he, he cannot take, even if he were to take judicial notice, the appellate court cannot take judicial notice of what his juni- judicial knowledge. So I don't even know that a judge can take, but the bottom line is this I don't want to because I have to refresh my memory on how that works. But no evidence that has to be direct proof, testimony from a witness that observe and you get the right and I get the right to confront this witness. There was no testimony from a witness said that you committed child abuse and I committed child abuse. So all I need to do is to uh, place the state to his burden of proof is when you say that you did not physically abuse, mentally abuse, nor neglect our child. And when I get ready to, uh, to, uh, to, to testify, but I'm like I told them, I'm not a witness. I'm not a party. So, you know, they act like they don't understand what the hell was going on, but they will. As it relates to you, Brandy, without a witness coming in for a, an appellate court to review any judgment, then there's no proof of it. What they're talking about, it was happens even if they could, that happened, that was in an adversary hearing. That was at a show cause hearing. This is the truth trial on the merits. So if the jury, just think if a jury had been there, who came in the court and who, what would what, what the jury heard here? The jury, nobody, in other words, the people at the hospital, assuming that there was a jury trial, this is the best I can make it clear. Assuming that on April 12 of this year, we had our jury trial. Who came to court that witness that claimed that they witnessed what they, that what the county attorney, this hearsay crap, to say that you did what you did and I did what I did. Who came to court to say that? Nobody was there. There's no evidence of child abuse. There's no evidence that came in that day. And they, and they, and they supposed to be went to law school. They supposed to be, he supposed to be a judge. He does not know. Man, just because it's a bench trial, you still need witnesses to come to court today because this is what we call a trial on the merits, a bench okay. trial. Okay, you, no, no, I'm, you go on and. Okay. 
So again, um, there is no no evidence. This is a violation of due process when the claim is a claim for no evidence. If we were dealing with just the merits of the case. So I'm making clear for Judge Phillips that I don't understand what he's going through. But in this situation, uh, Judge Phillips did not. He did not. That were this, the, the state called no witness to discharge or carry her burden of proof. The state of Texas, she had a burden of proof to prove beyond a reasonable doubt or whatever. No, no, that the standard of review is the standard is different uh, for uh, it's not a criminal case, so it's a civil case. So the Supreme Court of the United States has stated that the standard that the state of Texas must overcome to show that parents are unfit to, you know, they are unfit as parents is clear and convincing. In this case, there was no witness came in and testified to any of the allegations that were falsely made against us. And these attorneys, they, 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 they wouldn't know because they, because they don't work for us. They work for Judge Phillips. So they would, even if we were to accept these attorneys, they would not come in and say that Judge, this was a bench trial. And there was no evidence that was presented and admitted into evidence. There was no witness. So what Savannah and CPS them talked about, they talked about, let me show people something, just what's, what's going on here. Before, I, sometimes I'm like President Trump, I speak and I, you know, people think we lying and we just be misstating what we know. I guess our mind race so fast. But here's the situation. Before a court can go to the part of the litigation where the, that they've already established that child only, let me put it this way, only after it has been established that at during an adversary hearing that child abuse occurred do we move on to okay well we've already established by clear and convincing evidence that child abuse has occurred now what we are concerned with is rehabilitating you as parents so we're gonna uh, offer you a service plan and if you complete this plan then we'll give you back your child but only if you complete this plan that means you cannot use drugs you have to go to these classes but unless they first establish at a, what they call an adversary hearing that child abuse has occurred, then you don't get to that. So when Savannah Johnson and the prosecutors in there wasting taxpayers' time about branded testing positive for drugs and I didn't do this and she didn't do that, that has nothing to do with the state having to overcome or carry her burden even at this trial on the merits that child abuse has occurred. Child abuse has occurred. We get a right to confront the witnesses against us. Those witnesses did not come appear in court. Therefore, due process was violated. We cannot cross-examine paper. We cannot cross-examine an affidavit. We can only cross-examine a witness and ask that question, ask that witness a question. Does that make sense? So at this hearing, the person who alleged that Brandy uh, admit, claimed that she heard voices that told her to kill herself and the person that said that I was slinging my child around from side to side yelling plus screaming plus ranting which have different meanings so I won't say you know that person did not appear in court that person gave no sworn testimony that person was not subject to cross-examination. Therefore, the judgment is void. But that's one reason why the judgment is void. The judgment is also void because the judge, Phillips, did not render judgment. I will put that on YouTube and to show you what the Texas Supreme Court and all the other intermediate appellate courts of Texas under the Supreme Court has stated. When a judge said, I'll grant, I will do it. Instead of saying, it is done. Your motion for, your request for a divorce is granted. Your request that uh, Ronald Dwayne Whitfield be 
uh, parental rights be terminated as the presumed father is granted. Or your request that Ron Dwayne Whitfield's parental rights as the alleged father be granted. Or your request that Brandon Brene Charles's uh, parental rights as mother be granted. Not that I'll do it and then ask, uh, when is the entry? Entry of a judgment is not the same as the rendition of a judgment. Today, uh, on April 12, uh, Judge Philip thought he was uh, rendering judgment that day by saying, well, I'll grant your request. Now, just Google Texas law and type, uh, type in or speak out, however you use your system, uh, the law in Texas for rendition of judgment must be a present, not a future act. And then you will see what the hell I'm talking about. The record from the court reporter's record. So he put me out the courtroom, so I couldn't record that part. So I wanted to keep that to myself. I did not want to put them up on that. I kept that to myself until I actually got a chance to see the record and see if he was um, experienced enough to know that he must render judgment now and that what you see on paper that is what we call the entry he thought he was rendering judgment in open court and he did not so we'll automatically get our baby back on that ground we'll automatically get a new trial on that ground but it's not that's not what we want we want this judge locked up he had me locked up, but I don't do evil for evil. By getting him locked up, we help him. When the state of Texas, then I'll conclude this video. I can tell you today, when the state of Texas arrested me lawfully, but unlawfully charged me, did not indict me, did not convict me, and rendered and entered no judgment against me, thereby making my incarceration unlawful, y'all help me. Y'all got me off drugs. So by removing Judge Phillips, he's not fit to hold public office. By by putting Judge Phillips, uh, getting him indicted, maybe we will be helping Judge Phillips. This will help the county attorney. They need help. They were unwilling to change on their own. I did not act to become extreme. They were extreme. So now that they went this direction we don't turn around we pursue it finally in 1982 when I was in ROTC without going into the specific details and elaborating more I once had a ROTC, ROTC sergeant to use what we call finesse on me I wanted to quit high school because my girlfriend and I had broken up and, you know, I thought that was the end of my life. So I didn't tell him about her, but I did tell him I wanted to drop out of high school. And he told me, you're a quitter. You're a quitter. And that, that, that disturbed me. The man called me a quitter. Hell, you mean, bitch, I'm not no motherfucking quitter. So when he called me a quitter, I was determined. So I said, okay, I'll just leave. Houston moved to Dallas with my mother. And get back in school. And I always, I get when I went to Dallas, I got an ROTC in Dallas at a school called James Madison. And then I enrolled in ROTC at a predominantly white school called Skyline ROTC. Because I guess I got military discipline. And when I do what I do, this is, takes me back to my, mil to my military days, to my ROTC Day. So when I go after this judge uh, legally and lawfully, once I go after you, just like when Donald Trump goes after you, it's a problem. I don't want this judge and CPS getting away with this crime. I end this video at 3422 minutes.